That is always so satisfying. If you want to build high-end custom car audio projects, router techniques, and having a strategy for how all of these different layers come together is essential. We're currently working on a build for these two JL Audio 12 TW3s. And in this video, I wanna take you guys step-by-step -step through the process of shaping everything and adding fasteners to secure everything together. We're gonna to answer questions like, what if you have a clearance issue with the subwoofer hitting your beauty panel? Also, what is the correct technique for forming two different router profiles together. How can we use neodymium magnets so that everything clicks into place and how can we account for clearance for fastener heads so that everything can sit flush? Hey everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. On this channel, our goal is to work together to learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Really quick before we get into it, a quick thank you to our show sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts sells a wide variety of different car audio wire and wiring accessories, but if you are installing an amplifier, I'd recommend checking out their amplifier installation kits. These come with power wire, ground wire, remote turn on wire, some kits include split loom, speaker wire, RCA signal wire, a mini a &L fuse block, and all the various small little accessories that you might need, including a fuse. With these kits, you definitely get a ton of value, so if you wanna learn more, check out the links down in the video description. In the previous video, here's where we left off. We've got all of our beauty panels shaped. Now, just to give you guys some insight in case you missed that video, I have a trim ring here, and the point of this trim ring is to hide several different fastener locations. You can see all those holes there. You've also got the main baffle board. This is going to trim out around the subwoofers you have these side wings the point of that is to meet up with the sides of the trunk and then you have this outer trim ring which exists to obviously go around the inner trim ring but also to hide some of the other fastener locations now all these holes that you see these are sized for 1024 hardware in order for everything to screw together the one piece that isn't going to be screwed on is this piece here and the purpose of that is because I simply just don't want to show Show any screws on the outside here when I attach it to the enclosure. So now a lot of times you can rely upon the material fitment between the different layers of vinyl for this to press fit in and hold itself nice and tight. But in my design here, you can see that there's this large area down here that's not constrained by the outside shape. So I want to use some magnets in order to hold this on. And that's how we're going to kick off this video. The first step is I'm going to be using this drill bit in order to transfer the center point of each of the holes for the magnets. What we're going to do is we're going to position our piece here that we need to stick to this piece exactly where we want it and we're going to drill holes from the back side. Now I need to determine exactly where I want to drill those holes so I'm going to flip over the baffle board and I'm going to trace the outline of that front shape onto the back. So now if we pick this up and don't forget again we are looking at the back it's helpful to label that so you don't forget but now I can plan out each of my specific magnet mounting positions. Now I actually took this a step further and I'm using the Mobile Solutions matrix template in order to add this pattern. And right now I'm just drawing it on. And the reason for that is I'm going to be machining this pattern onto the front side of the piece. So I would like to try to avoid where these machine grooves are going to be as well. As an example, this would be a good location for a magnet right here. You can see that that machine groove is nowhere near that location. Whereas if you were to try to put a magnet somewhere like right here that's right where I'm going to have that groove to mark out each of my plan spots I'm going to use a punch and then just do a little pencil circle around it just so I can remind myself where they're at after I template tape the insert to the front side of the baffle I'm going to take this over to my drill press and use that drill bit from the magnet fitment system in order to drill and transfer all of these holes so now I can pop these panels apart remove the template tape and I now have perfectly aligned holes on the front and back side of these pieces. Because I'm using 3 8 inch magnets, I've loaded in this specialized 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I do wanna point out that these are actually specialty made bits. They're not exactly 3 8 of an inch or a quarter inch. They're actually undersized ever so slightly. The custom machining done to these bits allows you to have a really nice tight fitment on the magnets once you pound them into place. Each of my magnets that I'm using is about an eighth inch thick, so I'm gonna set up my drill press so that I go just a little bit deeper than an eighth of an inch. So now I can make each of these holes, and I of course wanna make sure that I pay attention and do these holes on the correct side of each of my pieces. 
So here we have it guys, you can see each of those mating holes that's going to allow us to add our magnets, but I'm going to hold off on putting the magnets in for the time being, just because I have some more additional machining that I wanna to do to these pieces. After all, when we're running our piece around on the router table here, I don't wanna have the magnets getting stuck to the router table, and I also don't want to risk running one of these magnets into the router bit. In a separate video, I'm gonna be using the stretched hex pattern here from the matrix template set in order to add this machining profile onto the front of the baffle. I'm gonna do this in a separate video so that I can go more in detail. So if you wanna see that, be sure to stay tuned in on the channel. And here it is after I've added that hexagon pattern. So now I can move on to doing some of the edge profiling and getting rid of some of these hard corners. The first edge profile that I wanna add is one of these right here. I'm gonna go with a 45 degree chamfer. We're gonna do this around this edge here on the subwoofer flush mount holes. And we're also going to do it on the inside of our trim ring. Just in case you're not familiar with the router, the big advantage here is I have a wide variety of different bits that do different things that I can use to create different shapes and profiles. We can easily swap these bits out into our router table and then make our cutting paths. After running that chamfer bit around here, you guys can see what that profile looks like. So we're starting to add more dimension and shape here. And while I have that chamfer bit loaded, I also want to address this edge here. I'm really excited to see how that chamfer edge is going to line up with the hex pattern that we added earlier. Here it is guys, so the chamfer that we just did on this panel and you can see how it aligns with a lot of this hexagon pattern. This is going to have a ton of dimension and shape. It's gonna look super cool once we wrap it with our upholstery vinyl material. While we're still working on this piece, there is something else that I want to address here. I did a quick test fit with the subwoofer and I knew that this was probably going to be an issue and be super close. I actually have where the subwoofer is touching the backside of this piece. And that's just because of the material stack ups. We do have this standoff that we added when we built the subwoofer enclosure. We just needed a little bit more thickness there, but rather than adding more thickness, I can just remove some material from the backside of this piece. We're going to do this with this large rabbiting bit here. You can see that it cuts a groove into the material. So once this is flipped over, it's going to allow for some clearance above that subwoofer. With that rabbiting bit pass complete you can see the clearance step that has been added and let's just do a quick little test fit here and you can see that is perfect perfectly matches up to the outside of the subwoofer there and we no longer have any clearance issues this perfectly is flush with this surface here next i want to add some profile to this side edge on each side along with the top for that, we're gonna be using one of the monster profiles. In this case here, we're going with this 63 degree chamfer bit. The advantage here being that this cuts further into the part horizontally. So I'll swap in this bit doing the typical bit change procedure and I'm gonna make my cutting pass, but I want you guys to pay attention to something here and that's where I start and stop the cut. I wanna make sure that I don't extend this profile around to the bottom of the piece. So I'm gonna be really, really careful as I come up on the end here to stop perpendicular to that corner. What I mean by that is if you imagine the exact center axis of this router bit, I want that point to be perfectly in line with this line here. By doing it that way, this is what the bottom of this profile looks like. It just stops here rather than wrapping and continuing around the bottom edge. So now you can get a feel for how all of this shape is coming together. In fact, if we line up all these panels together, you can really start to see how all of this shape is adding a ton of dimension and really making this panel look look one of a kind. Now we're not done yet though. There's a couple more important details we need to add. I want to soften up the outside corners of this with a small radius bit. And we also have one more extremely important router bit pass that we need to do on the back side of these pieces. And don't forget, I'm also going to be showing you guys a little bit later how we continue to add all of our fastener locations. In the meantime, I use this small 1 8 inch round over bit. This just slightly rounds out the corner as you can see on my test piece here. So I use this around all of these edges. I'll show you guys the machining process here. Even though this is a very small radius, it's just going to give me much more of a finished look once I wrap the upholstery materials around it. Hard corners are not really a thing inside interior geometry of a vehicle. So adding these soft corners is just gonna make everything look more refined. So I've even softened up those corners on pieces that you'll never really see just for the sake of giving them more of a finished feel if you are taking this apart. 
But in the meantime, let's line this up here and once again, get a better feel for how this is going to look when it's finished. Now, if you're wondering about this gap and how you can basically see through to the back panel there, that's intentional. It's going to allow some clearance for our different upholstery materials. So I'm gonna have carpet on this piece here and here, and that carpet's going to be able to tuck down into that groove along with the vinyl that is wrapping on this piece. But the next step that we need to consider, and this is a high level detail here, is the fact that the vinyl is going to wrap around the back side of the part so that we have a finished looking edge. And we need to make some sort of clearance on the back side here for that material to tuck. To do that, I'm gonna be using this quarter inch rabbiting bit. And the quarter inch means that's the spacing from the edge of the bearing to the edge of the flute here. And then obviously we can control how far the router bit is out of the table. And we do that in order to determine the thickness of the material. So in this case, since this is carpet material, it's about 3 30 seconds of an inch which I was able to carefully measure by using the car audio fabrication material gap gauge. So you can see I measured it in this gap here, which told me the exact dimension that I need to use for that height raise that out of the table and we're going to start with making the cutting passes for the pieces that are going to be wrapped with carpet so basically this outer trim ring and then the two side panels and you guys can see right here on screen while i do that machining process with those rabbited grooves added to the pieces that we're going to carpet our next step is obviously to do the same for the pieces that we are going to vinyl wrap now i did make a few changes though in this case i went with a 3 16 inch rabbit bit so that's the distance from the edge of the cutting flute to the bearing and the reason for that is I felt that a quarter inch cut into the material was simply going to be too close to these magnet holes. It wouldn't blow through the magnet hole, but it just wouldn't leave a lot of material around it to keep that magnet secured in place. Along with that, we're not as far out of the table this time because vinyl, as measured, has a thinner thickness. So on the router, let's cut those passes as well to these two different pieces. I'm going to hold off on showing you guys the front side of the finished assembly for just a few minutes here, but we've got all these rabbited spaces added for our material compensation. Now we need to add all of our fasteners. I'm going to kind of breeze through this because it's pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to be using these threaded inserts along with machine screws in order to secure everything together. The reason we do that rather than just using wood screws or something like that is it allows us to easily take these panels apart multiple times without damaging the quality of the thread. Threads. The process for adding these threaded inserts is pretty repetitive but simple. I'll start with using a Forstner bit and this is just going to allow the threaded insert to sink down below the surface. Next I'm going to use a smaller diameter drill bit. This is just going to make sure that I have a perfectly square hole along with that metal guide that you can see on top. Next I'm going to step up to a 7 millimeter drill bit. This is the specific size needed for the hole for the threaded insert. And finally I'll use an allen key to thread the threaded insert down into to the material. With these added everywhere that I need them on the enclosure and after I've done a test fit with all of my mechanical fasteners I can transition into adding some magnets. An important side note for you guys off camera I've used that Forstner bit to also drill some additional clearance holes for the top of the heads of the bolts. As an example this fastener here is sitting on top of that surface and I wouldn't be able to mate this face with this face because that's going to be in the way but since I've added that Forstner hole there this can go over the fastener and be perfectly flush. It looks like there's a gap, but that's just because we've added that rabbited groove on the back side. The faces are sitting flush like they need to. Now, when we go to add our magnets, it would be easy to get confused and put them in the wrong clearance holes. So what I've done is I put an M next to everything that is for a magnet. The process for adding these magnets is very simple. I'm just going to use this acrylic piece that has a magnet embedded into it, and that allows me to attach the stack of magnets. And I'm going to use a rubber mallet to secure all of them one by one into a common face. Next, I'm going to flip that stack onto the opposite side of the acrylic. That way I'm using the correct polarity for the magnet and I'm going to repeat onto the mating piece. All right, my friends, the moment of truth. How does this all come together? Imagine if you will, that this is already installed and sitting in the trunk. First, we're going to need to attach these side pieces. These attach with these two 1024 screws on each side, obviously. Let's slide this out of the way and make our next part of our assembly, which is attaching this outer trim ring to the inside baffle piece. So these two pieces are now secured together with five different fasteners, and this will be an assembly. We would obviously install the subwoofers, and then this is now going to mount onto the box. 
There we go. So that assembly is now held on by 10 different fasteners. And of course, we don't want any of these fasteners to show, so check this out. Boom. Now, with some of the teaser pictures that I've been posting online, people have been asking, don't these panels block the sound? I think we're definitely going to have to do some testing once everything is installed, so be sure to tune into the channel for the rest of this project. Don't forget, I have tons of other car audio content here on this channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And also don't forget that next time you need an amplifier wiring kit for your project, be sure to check out our sponsor, New Concepts. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team. And of course, thank you to you for tuning in and watching.